the bell, the crowd, the fight was on, and the devil leaped in fury. With all his evil tricks, he came undone. He threw his jabs of hate and lust, a stab of pride and envy. But the hands that knew no sin blocked everyone. Forty days and nights they fought, and Satan couldn't touch him. Now the final blow saved for the final round. Prophetically, Christ's hands came down, and Satan struck in vengeance. The blow of death fell Jesus to the ground. The devils roared in victory. The saints shocked and perplexed as wounds appeared upon his hands and feet. Then Satan kicked him in his side, and blood and water flowed, and they waited for the ten count of defeat. God the Father turned his head, his tears announcing Christ was dead. The ten count would proclaim the battle's end. Then Satan trembled through his sweat in unexpected horror. Yet, as God started to count by saying, Ten. Hey, hey, wait a minute, God. Nine. Stop your counting wrong. Eight. His eyes. Seven. His fingers are twitching. Six. Where's all his light coming from? Five. He's alive. Four. Oh, George Washington, Samuel Adams, First Chief Justice John Jay, names synonymous with the spirit of our country, founding fathers of the USA. Over 200 years ago, they shook off the chains of tyranny from Great Britain by divine call. Citing 27 biblical violations, they wrote the Declaration of Independence with liberty and justice for all. But something happened since Jefferson called the Bible the cornerstone for American liberty, then put it in our schools as a light. Or since give me liberty or give me death, Patrick Henry said, our country was founded on the gospel of Jesus Christ. We eliminated God from the equation of American life, thus eliminating the reason this nation first began. From beyond the grave, I hear the voices of our founding fathers plead, you need God in America again. Of the 55 men who formed the Constitution, 52 were active members of their church. Founding fathers like Noah Webster, who wrote the first dictionary, could literally quote the Bible chapter and verse. James Madison said, we've staked our future and our ability to follow the Ten Commandments with all our heart. These men believed you couldn't even call yourself an American if you subvert the Word of God. In his farewell address, Washington said, you can't have national morality apart from religious principle, and it's true. Because right now we have nearly 150,000 kids carrying guns to these war zones we call public schools. In the 40s and 50s, student problems were chewing gum and talking. In the 90s, rape and murder are the trend. The only way this nation can even hope to last this decade is put God in America again.
Abe Lincoln said the philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation will be the philosophy of government in the next. So when you eliminate the word of God from the classroom and politics, you eliminate the nation that word protects. America is now number one in teen pregnancy and violent crime, number one in illiteracy, drug use, and divorce. Every day a new holocaust of 5,000 unborn die, while pornography floods our streets like open sewers. America's dead and dying hand is on the threshold of the church, while the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah vexes us all. When it gets to the point where people would rather come out of the closet than clean it, it's the sign that judgment of God is going to fall. If there's ever been a time to rise up church, it's now. And as the blood-bought saints of the living God proclaim, that it's time to sound the alarm from the church house to the White House and say, we want God in America again. I believe it's time America to stand up and proclaim that one nation under God is our demand and send this evil lifestyle back to Satan where it came from and let the word of God revive our dying land. For Jesus Christ is coming back again in all his glory and every eye shall see him on that day. That's why a new anointing of God's power is coming on us to boldly tell the world you must be saved because astrology won't save you. Your horoscope won't save you. The Bible says these things are all farce. If you're born again, you don't need to look to the stars for your answers, because you can look to the very one who made those stars. History tells us time and time again, to live like there's no God makes you a fool. If you want to see kids live right, stop handing out condoms, and start handing out the word of God in schools. Yeah. Oh,